Well, the Egg and Ballistics 101 series is back. Thank goodness, it's been a really long time. I think probably about a year since I did the, the last episode in the series. Um, and in the previous episode, we wrapped up the internal ballistics and uh, transitional ballistics section of the Egg and Ballistics 101 series. Um, kind of brought that to an end. And, and after that, I decided I really wanted to take a bit of a break. Um, and it's been a long time since we ended off that section and there's a number of reasons for this. I think first of all, the fact that I've just been really, really busy this year. There's been a lot that has come my way. I've been traveling quite a bit. I've been um, doing a lot of hunting, um, a lot of very important things that aren't necessarily more important than the, the um, uh, technical stuff like the series. Um, but you know, when an opportunity to hunt comes your way, it's not something you can postpone all the time. You've got to go for it. Um, and I know you guys love seeing the hunting as well. So I'm sure you'll f forgive me for the lack of effort being put into the series. Um, and I think the second reason why it's taken so long is simply the fact that I realized that uh, there are a lot of things in the external ballistics section that I wanted to do but a, a bit more research on first. I wanted to get a little bit more in the field experience with these things before I teach on them because I don't want to lead you astray in any way. And I'm so glad that I've taken the time to learn because over the past year or so, I've learned some incredibly, incredibly valuable things. I've had the opportunity to go to Sweden, to the FX factory, to actually test the things that in theory I know in a very uh, controlled testing environment in an indoor range with high speed cameras, with good lighting, with clamps to clamp the rifle in to eliminate shooter error, all these things. I've learned a heck of a lot in the FX factory. And I've also learned a heck of a lot through uh, actually extending my skill set to the centerfire rifle side of things. You'll see a lot of reloading equipment around me here. That's because I'm about to also launch a reloading series that I'm going to start. Um, but although many of you only want to see the air gun stuff, um, you must know that my involvement in the centerfire rifle side of things, especially with the reloading, has really, really taught me a lot because I would say that the concepts, although maybe slightly different between air guns and centerfire rifles are actually, they overlap so much. And because the, the centerfire rifle scene has been around for so much longer and there's so, there are so much more um, competitive precision centerfire rifle shooters than air gun shooters, I've been able to involve myself in that community and through that, through reading forums, through talking to people who've been in the industry for a very, very long time, who have heaps of experience, who have, who have um, been to world championships, I've able to learn stuff from them that I would have never learned from the air gun industry. And I've actually been able to bring that stuff over to the air gun side of things. So I have to credit a lot of the things you're gonna see in this external ballistic section to my involvement in the centerfire rifle stuff. So I would ask those of you who are only interested in air guns to be patient with me when I do um, upload videos with centerfire rifles. Even if you don't have a gun of your own or it doesn't interest you, you will actually benefit from that in the long run because of the stuff I'm able to bring over into the air gun side of things. And in turn, once I've learned that, to actually take my knowledge and bring it to companies like FX or um, optics companies or you know, just to the industry in general and bring that contribution and together you and I with the uh, information you give me, with the feedback you give me, bring that stuff to the, into the industry and move our sport forward. So that's fantastic. So with that said, we're going to go into the external ballistic section. Um, it's, it's going to be quite different in a lot of ways to the internal ballistic section because it's stuff that you can't necessarily see. Uh, it's very difficult to study these things. Um, internal ballistics, you can tweak around with your gun, you can, you can change different things, um, and it, it kind of makes a lot of sense, but when it gets to external ballistics, a, a lot of it is very much uh, you know, theory-based, and you have to look at the theory first and then test it afterwards, and that becomes a little bit challenging. But I am at the point now where I feel I'm able to discuss these topics with confidence. So. Let's take a look at the upcoming section and see what it entails. So I suppose the first thing we need to look at is what external ballistics actually is. Um, by definition, it is basically the study of how a projectile behaves in flight. So in all the previous videos in the series, we have looked 
at um, what happens inside the gun, what happens inside the barrel, um, and how this stuff affects accuracy or precision or just the way things work inside the gun. Um, but now we're moving to outside the gun. So now the pellet has left the barrel. What happens when it's in the air between the time it leaves the end of the muzzle and the time it, it hits its target? That's what we're going to look at. All rifles shoot one hole groups at point blank, but if the projectile isn't behaving in a very controlled way through the air, you really can't expect it to stay on a straight flight path. And that's what separates the average PCPs from the excellent ones. A good air gun manufacturer is able to understand what is happening after the pellet leaves the barrel and manufacture the gun accordingly so that a mastery of the internal ballistics can actually translate <laughs> to a mastery of the external ballistics. The gun should always dictate how the pellet is gonna behave in flight. I'm not gonna give you an extremely detailed course outline for the external ballistics section um, because it may change slightly as I start planning stuff and as I realize that certain topics need more attention than others. Um, but you know, there are many things that I can tell you now that we are gonna discuss. It may take a few weeks, it may take a few months, but we're going to look at topics such as spin versus drag stabilization, gyroscopic precession and nutation, subsonic, transonic and supersonic flight, ballistic coefficient and drag, gravity and its effects, wind and its effects, spin drift and the Magnus effect. <laughs> So as you can see, there are some really hectic long words that I've just been splurting out. Um, it's some very technical stuff. And because of that, please don't expect videos to come out week after week. I really want to be able to take my time between episodes to plan them properly, to make sure that I can include all the information you need. So please be patient. With that said, I am extremely excited to share some of the things that I've learned with you and hopefully learn some more new things along the way. Um, so keep an eye out for that. It's going to be great and I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching and I hope you continue to keep watching.